Hello, Saltstrom Nation, Joe Simons, Lake Diamonds. I am on a boat right now. On this is on a boat. This is Salt Strong Unchurched, episode number two. I got my boy, Pastor Johnny Kelly, back. Hey. Last time we talked about God. Is God real? Who is God? And you shared your story. Mm hmm. It was amazing, and the the questions that we're hearing and the questions that you hear as a pastor a lot are, uh, after that one, is like, you know, why church? And we talked about church kind of being boring and intimidating, and a quick little story. I was at a, a meeting recently when we were talking about church, and one of the guys had shared that he had given up on church because of the people. Uh, in particular, some people at the church and also the pastor. The pastor ended up doing some pretty immoral things, like the kind of stuff that makes it to the news immoral. Mm, yeah. And he lost trust. And the quote I heard from someone else there, I'm, I wrote this down. He says, the bad news about with all the media and stuff is Christianity seems to be judged by its followers and not the founder. Anytime that they're trying to push down the church or why churches are relevant and why pastors are all pedophiles and all the stuff that you hear out there, it's sad, but it's because they're only judging Christianity by its followers who are imperfect people and mm -hmm. not meant to be perfect and not the founder. And so we're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about what church is meant to America and, and even some of the problems now with our society, right? I mean, we can continue to, to basically kick church out of our lives and mm -hmm. kick God out of our schools. And now we're here in America with more prosperity, more money, more overall abundance and more opportunities than at any point in our lives. And yet there are more people committing suicide. There are more people who claim to be unhappy and unfulfilled. And isn't it ironic that this is also the time where fewer people than ever in the history of America are going to church, right? For sure. Fewer people than ever have a community or network when things do get bad that they can go to and cry on their shoulder. And that's what church is meant well, to there, a lot of us. So. And there's fewer churches. Um, you know, when I, I started my church, I planted my church, you know, uh, a little over five years ago. And yeah. uh, that was a question that I got, like, why are you, why are you, why are you starting a church? Like, there's too many churches already and, and, and that's sort of like the idea that we have in our mind that, that you know they're, they're everywhere they're they're really not um in the 1950s there was basically one church for every 300 or so people in the united states right now it's about one church for every 1200 people uh, most churches don't seat 1200 people um that's the idea of wanting to have some more churches and, and, and honestly have churches that are not hung up because I think a lot of the problems people have with the idea of church is uh the history uh you know it, it it is imperfect it's full of imperfect people it's run by imperfect pastors and imperfect leaders and uh it's you know in 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 some ways it is as broken as we are um but so why it, should people go well the reason they should go honestly is it, it is it is the method that God chose for us to be able to grow closer to him you know i don't want to get weird or anything the, the bible um talks about you know you know the end times and all that and going to heaven and and there's a thing they call the marriage supper of the lamb and it's basically it, the way that bible lays it out is it's a, a big party and it, the idea of it is is that 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 at this party, like Jesus is the groom and, and the church is his bride. Like it, it, it is his first love. It is his biggest love, his only love. Um, uh, and, and whenever he refers to us, the church as his bride, what he, he's not referring to one person. He's not referring to, to individuals. He's referring to the church, the body that, that, that he talked about, you know, uh, it was the way that he wanted his people to be able to work together. It's, it's kind of like, you know, and I poke fun at it, but it's kind of like uh, you and Luke have two totally div uh, divergent and different skill sets, you know, uh, it, but without one or the other, Salt Strong wouldn't be what Salt Strong is. It wouldn't be in the same that then you bring on other people, other parts, you know, Tony, uh, Peter Deeks and all these guys that, that come in and they each offer a different variable that the rest of you don't. Uh, and, and, and in the same way, God created us. Uh, you know, I fully believe that God created each and every one of us. He created us on purpose. He created us with a real purpose. And and those purposes are all different. Like, I none of us have the same purpose. Like, yeah. you know, the way, I, the way I tell our church is that, that 
that everybody at church is a 10 at something. You're all a 10 at something. You might think you're a loser. You might think you're not good at something, but you're all a 10 at something. Uh, it's just finding what that thing is. And and that's why the body of Christ was meant to be done through the church. Why, why God said, I, I'm going to build my church. He didn't say, I'm going to build my individual Christians. Jesus said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my church. And the enemy's not going to win against it. Like the, it's, the church is going to win in the end. And, and so because of that, I, I think the biggest thing is that we need to understand that, that, that in the midst of failures, in the midst of people screwing up, you know, church, you know, let's be honest, can be very uncomfortable at times. Yep. Um, you know, I was telling you, like, I, I, and it's, in, but it's anywhere. And a lot of people like don't go to church because they feel uncomfortable in the moment and, and feeling uncomfortable in the moment, you know, I understand it's uncomfortable. It's not great, but uh, like I talked about last week, you know, that everything worth doing starts in uncomfortableness. There's yeah. never a comfortable, like, thing that changes the world that just never works that way. And But 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 beyond all that, like, it, it might be uncomfortable in the moment, but it's a point of giving it a shot and giving it a chance. You know, I I remember going to my first Salt Strong event, like, the very first one, and I'm hanging out with all these guys who fish, you know? Uh, guys and gals who like to fish, and and I like to fish, and I'm like, this is awesome, and uh, and I walked in, and I was alone. I didn't, my, my wife wasn't with me, uh, you know, uh, I didn't have, uh, I didn't really have any friends there, uh, at least not yet, and I walked in very uncomfortable, like awkward, just sort of like standing there, like, hey, hi. hopefully I meet someone. Hopefully I meet, yeah, I see, I, oh, there's 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 Joe, he's a rock star, and. And then I, you know, you see CA, and you're like, "Oh my goodness, I've watched him on TV forever." And like, you know, you get excited, but you're like, "I'm just sort of hanging back," you know, because I was uncomfortable. I, I, I would, I would say it's probably the best representation I can have personally over the last ten years of what it would be like to just walk into a new church. Like, you don't know anybody. You know, you want to be there. You know that they at least are questioning or or or, or wanting to learn more. In the same way you yep. do, they're, they're they're interested in this topic that you're going to talk about. They're they're wondering what what is real and what's not, and 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 they walk in. And maybe you walk in with your your kids and your wife, or maybe it's just you alone, or you know your husband or whoever. But you end up sitting there going, "Man, I feel awkward. I feel uncomfortable." And I think so often, um. The, the failure happens on two parts there is that, that we quit too quick. Like if I would have walked into that salt strong event and 20 minutes later been like, yeah, I'm gone. I'm dipping like this, this sucks. Like there's These guys aren't friendly. Yeah. I, I would have missed out on really good friends. I would have missed out on being friends with you and a bunch of the other insiders that I'm buddies with Danny and Michael. And you would be guys. on this boat right I would, now. I would be on our freedom boat club here in winter. Haven, this so. thing is sweet too. <laughs> this, the Bimini tops powered. You hit a button <laughs> yeah. And it goes up, oh, man. This is your highfalutin <laughs> in Winter Haven. That's the uh, beauty about Freedom Book Club. <laughs> everything is brand spanking <laughs> new. Nice, I like <laughs> it. Uh, but you know, if I would have left, I would. I, yeah, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have those friends, those guys I fish with, and the guys I talk with, and uh, none of that would have been real. Um, and 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 that whole part of my life would just not exist. And and the fact is, is that the, the same way I think happens in church is that that, that uh, twofold that we. We, we dip a little early because we get a little uncomfortable. And then we also, I think it, 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 at times, um, because the church is full of imperfect people, um, a lot of churches don't expect company. Like, you show up on a Sunday morning like, oh, look, a guest. Let's make them feel awkward and make them stand up and raise their hand. I don't ever do that at my church. but That's the, their it, fear, though, right? That is their fear. It's, and, 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 it's, and I've I've been there. Like, we've moved a couple times. We were in, you know, yeah. Atlanta, Texas, you know, back to Tampa, now Winter Haven. And I, it's almost like going into a fishing event and thinking they might ask you to tie a knot in front of everyone. Even you, though you might do it, they might know how, it, it's, it would be nerve-wracking. It'd be, it completely. It'd be even more nerve-wracking if they asked me to come up and, like, talk about myself or read a Bible verse or state. Like, yeah. it's a fear. Like, I, when I go to a new church, this is me personally. Maybe some of you guys can relate. 
I, I don't really want to talk to that many people. And I'm just being honest. That, no, like, completely. I want to sit in the back and just kind of watch and check out the pastor, check out how the people interact, check out the vibe. I don't want to, like, it's almost a fear that I'm going to go in there and people are going to be all over me and bombard me with Bible quotes and, like, you know, yeah. like, it's, well, it's you want weird. It, you want it to be organic, and that is what the church was meant to be. It was a, a, an organically growing group of people that, that love God yep. and want to uh, make other people know his love too, you know, or get other people to know who he is and how much he loves them. You know, I remember going, uh, years ago, I, w- I went to my grandma's church to visit her and they found out at the time I was a youth pastor. This was a long time ago. And, uh, this is little, you know, it's the kind of church that most of us, if we went to church as a kid grew up in, you know, this is a church that, you know, has the same 40 people in it that were in it in the 1940s and, you know, and maybe a couple of their kids, but like just a very, Small community, small town, uh, small church, um, a lot of, a lot of very precious golden calves to their church. Things that you don't touch, you don't mess yeah. with, and I think that lends to some of the uncomfortableness, just some of the the history. But I remember walking into that church, and they found out that I used to be, or that I was a youth pastor. I'd never been there ever, and I'm sitting there, and they do the music at the beginning of service, and at the end, the pastor gets up and goes, "Why we have." We have uh, Johnny <laughs> Kelly here, who is our, uh, you know, he's the the grandson of, yeah, I'm like okay, and, and he goes, Johnny, you know what? Why don't you come up here? Why don't you share today? Why don't you? Why don't you preach for us? No way. And I was, and yeah, it was that, like immediately they pull, uh. and and it's so uncomfortable. Um, I think it's part of the reason why I like the idea of a lot of the new churches that are come up, and there's some incredible churches that have been around forever too. So I'm not knocking them at all. Like I I grew up a part of them. Um, but a lot of the new churches, the cool thing is that you get to walk into a place that has a clean slate. Um, there aren't those, you know, idols or golden casts. The things like, oh, you know, you don't, you don't touch the coffee. That is, that's, 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 that's Miss June's job, and she handles that. You yeah. know, you don't do, you know, you don't do. Oh, we do it. This is why we do this because we've always done it this way, yeah. as opposed to going, well, hey, let's just do what's gonna work right. And I think the same thing goes with the organic nature of of trying to meet new people and 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 find friendships you know like that's one of the cool things i think in the same way that i did with saul strong is that you become friends with people that you wouldn't become friends with otherwise like and it's not bad it's just it's not that you would not include them in something it's just you would never be in together you know and there are guys that i've hung out with from saul strong that that i would have probably never have met otherwise or I never would have met otherwise guys that I probably you know I I, I may have hung out with I, but I, I love hanging out with them I love yeah. fishing with them and spending time with them and talking with them I love it it's a blast but uh it, it's something that happens when we let ourselves sort of go you know what it, it, it's going to be a little uncomfortable and it just is you know in the same way that it is in any aspect of something new um it's just a point of whether or not it's important yep. um and it, it and the Bible really does say that it, it is, that you're not supposed, you know, the, the Bible says you're not supposed to forsake. You're not supposed to forget about being a part <clears throat> of the body, being a part of the church, you know. And and the reason why is what I talked about earlier, that everybody has, a you know, they're a ten at something. Um, you know, in my church, there are things that I'm really good at. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at communicating on stage. I'm, I'm good at some of those different things, but... but I have people that are really good that are on my leadership team that are really incredible with kids and they, they work so great with kids and love on kids in a way that I never could. Um, we have people on our, on our worship team that lead the songs that, that, that do stuff that I could never do. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the same way, there, there are personalities and people in our church that, that, that I they they do things that I could and would never do. They they'll come up to me and say, "Hey, I'm I, this happened this week and I did this." Uh, you know, you know somebody is they they're moving and their kids were supposed to help them move and and their kids just didn't show up and so I called about five of my buddies and we showed up and we moved them. And I'm like, wow, it's, I didn't even know about it oh, until wow. two days later. Why? <clears throat> because they understood something. They understood that being a part of that community and it, that it makes us all stronger, even in the midst of at times it might be awkward or, you know, uncomfortable. The fact is, is that it's, it's having enough grace for people 
the same way that you would want them to have grace for you. Um, you know, that they're, they're, they're always going to be broken people at church. They just always are. There's always going to be people that aren't good. Uh, there, there's going to be people that are, that are bad, you know, ones that, that are just not good people, but most of them aren't bad. They, they're just sinners. They're broken. They're like all like me, like you, you know, they're just like us. They're normal people that make mistakes. And I know for me, when I make a mistake, I want grace. I want people to look at me and go, okay, we understand. Yep. Like you messed up here. You screwed up here. Um, but, but we understand. I want that for me. But we have a hard time giving that to other people, especially when it comes to the church. Because, well, they're part of the church. They're supposed to be perfect. And that's completely inaccurate. Like, if you're perfect, I don't want you at my church. Right. Like, I de- you're gonna you're gonna mess up our flow. <laughs> like yeah. we're we're a bunch of messed up broken people, man. And the whole want... point is, is 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 really you're. I'm hearing the word like friendships and community and, and people who have the the same goal, which is to become a better version of themselves, right? Yeah. Be, to become that that tin that God has made all of us. That's yeah. It's never to become perfect. It's to become a better version of of everything God equipped us with, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, you, you wanna you wanna be the best version of who you can be, and I think we all want to do that. I mean, in every aspect of our life. I mean, heck, that's why I'm a part of Salt Strong. I want to be the best fisherman I can be. Uh, and so I, what do I do? I, I I join a group of people, and that have knowledge in areas that I don't. Yep. And do we all have think alike? Do we all operate the same way? No, we're all different. And and uh, and, but, but in the end, like I become better from being a part of their lives and then being a part of mine. Um, and, and in the same way, the church does the same thing. Like, like uh, the, the people are better at different things and they help you. They help me. You know, I, I may be the pastor, but it doesn't mean that I'm not still learning, you know, that I, I, I'll have people s- say something to me or question something and I'll go, Oh wow. I, I as a pastor, I, I preached on something almost different than that. And it, but you just really moved my heart in a way that I didn't understand. You know, you know, you, you changed my, my, I wouldn't say changed my mind, but you helped me g- gain an understanding I didn't understand before. And, and, and I've watched over the last even 10 years that, that I've, that things that I believed have morphed and they've grown. They've, they've become more mature. Um, it doesn't mean that I was uh, right or wrong then or now. It just means that, that it's it's a learning process, yep. and 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 it isn't about being perfect. It's about uh, having the one that is perfect in our lives, uh, you know, having God in our lives, and being able to share Him with other people. I mean, He He loves people, and He loves them not when they're perfect. It is not a, it is not a, you know, get your life better and then come to church scenario. Like that's the worst. That's the dumbest thing you could ever do. And if you do that, I'm, I'm not calling you dumb. Just what you did, dumb. Uh, <laughs> just joking with you. Uh, you know, what, what it is, is it, it is not the smart thing to do because the idea of church, the church is not meant to be a museum. You know, you know, we, it's a hospital. It's a doctor's office. It's a place where you go when you're broken and you find a, a way to get better, uh, to, 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 to grow and learn more. Uh, they become a better, you know, for me, you know, I, I become a better father. Um you know, and become a, a, a better husband, um, a better leader in the community, somebody who who uh, understands that church is not about church. Church is about the world. You know, church should not be unto itself. It shouldn't be this, you know, and I think, you know, especially in the 80s, that was a very, you know, especially if you're in the, you know, the charismatic or the evangelical style churches and stuff like that, there was a lot of a lot of movement towards, you know, sort of all inclusive and they made Christian versions of everything. You know, there was, you know, you, had, you go to the bookstore, you go to the Christian bookstore, right. radio, you listen to Christian radio, fast food, you get Christian chicken at Chick-fil-A. And, uh, <laughs> but you, you have all these Christian sort of versions, you know, Christian schools and everything like that. And I'm not saying the, the, those things are wrong. Like they're not bad. They're not wrong. Um, but, as as a Christian and as a as as a church, we should be existing for the world around us. You know, um, a, a, an analogy that I've used before is um, 
the Bible says a couple of different places in different ways, but it basically says that you're supposed to be in the world and not of the world. What that means is, it, you know, that you're supposed to be up, out in the world. You're supposed to be a part of things. Uh, the, the church is supposed to be a part of things. Not just you individually, but the church mm. is supposed to be a part of the world. Uh, we're not supposed to be like them. We, we are supposed to be following Jesus and following God and trying to move people towards God that way. Um, but that it is our job to be a part of this world. And the, the analogy I always use is this, is that... Uh, so often, and, and I think it leads a lot of people away from church, is that, that, that we've experienced one of two things. Um, we ourselves or people around us at church have either been so, instead of being in the world, not of the world, they've been so far above it that they're like looking down their noses at it. Mm. That it it's like, it would be like out in the water out here. If, if, I, uh, if you were flying a plane overhead, and looking down on the world that is this beautiful lake out here, um, it, I can look up and see it, but it's not affecting me. It's not making any change here on the earth yep. right now. It's just going overhead. It's just making noise. I mean, that's all it's doing. It's making noise. And and, and as I think a lot of times we have been a part of churches that have people that are so far above the world that they look down their noses at it. Mm. And they look like, well, the people in the world are evil and they're dirty and they're gross. And that's not what God wants us to think because that's not what he thinks. He loves everybody. He doesn't love people that go to church more than people that don't go to church. Right. He loves everybody. Loves us all. You know, that we're, we're his kids. And, you know, you know, while at times I may have momentary favorites to my kids, I, I love them all. Right. You know, equally in different ways, but for because they all bring something different to the table. But I love them all so much, <clears throat> and so so many times I think the church has been so far above the world they look down their nose at, or they've been so far into the world that they get corrupted by it. And at that point, it's like a submarine. Like if we were sitting here and a and a sub went underneath us, we wouldn't know it. You know, we wouldn't know it. It would just, be, it would, it would. It's not affecting the world right. around us. It's just so do- dove into it that it's allowing the world to affect them instead of them making a difference positively in the world around them. And I really think God calls us to be a boat, you know, that we are on this world. We are a part of what we do in the church is supposed to be in, in the church being all of us are supposed to be a part on, on this world going around making changes. You know, a plane flies over. It doesn't affect the water. A submarine goes under. We don't notice it. But this boat goes across the lake. I just watched a boat go across the lake, and I can and they're, they're way over there now, but I can see all the way back over here behind us. I can see where they went. I can see the wake. The wake's coming towards us right now. I can see it yeah. coming. I can see the line of where they went, that they, that they made a change. You know, they stirred up, you know, algae and, 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 and moss and stuff. That they, 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 they left a path where they were making a difference in the community around them. And, and that's what the church is called to be. And But the only way it can be that is if we're a part of it. Uh, and, and trying to to make church a place that wants to see people get better. Uh, not be perfect. Yep. Not not a church, not to be a place that is judging people and telling them they're wrong. But a church that's telling people that Jesus loves them, God loves them right where they are. Right with whatever's going on, that God loves you. And, and, and we want to help you be a better version of you not by our standards but by your standards and by god's standards i love it let's another reason i wanted to be on this boat i love the boat analogy by the way is i was at a a c12 meeting and uh, any of you guys who are presidents or or leaders in your company and i want to be around you know just some christian people even if you're like me i don't have by the Bible memorized or anything. I had a lot of questions and the same reason in this podcast and the, the, we meet every month and last month's entire, uh, really like, uh, what we talked about for the whole day was about drifting Mm -hmm. and we're in a boat and there's obviously being anchored, which we are right now. And I think that's a massive part of, of what I've seen church in my life is to keep me more anchored. And I use the word anchored with like accountability, right? To Mm -hmm. keep me accountable. Uh, And I'll use a a good example. Everyone loves stories. Uh, Earlier in my life, I was really into college football. I'm not as much anymore. We, you know, cut the cord. I just, I don't care as much anymore because I've got more important things in my life. But I was into college football and I love drinking and I love 
doing day drinking with my college buddies, you know, especially when we all got together and we hadn't seen each other and we, we'd get pretty drunk. And next thing you know, it's like getting late. And I wasn't staying up till two in the morning like I did in college, but I was staying up too late and I would sleep in. And it's easy just to say, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really have married and my kids. I'll just, yeah, screw it. I'll, I'll skip church. And to me, that's just like skipping out on gym. And once you do it two or three weekends in a row, like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to skip the whole season, the whole fall. I'm kind of going to give it up to college football, a little bit selfish. And all of a sudden now I've drifted. I've drifted away from church. I've drifted away from my accountability friends. I've drifted away from really my community, my network that was there for me when times got tough. And then it's almost like it's it's the same as going to a gym after you've been gone for a month or two. It's so tough once you've drifted away from a little bit. So let's talk about just church in the forms of, of having an anchor in your life and that accountability of of keeping you around people that, that, that just want to love on you and, 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 and a place for you to go get healed when times do get bad. You know, and that is like one of the truest statements in the world. It's a great analogy with with the with the anchor because it it is uh, it is what church should be. Um, I think too often we think of uh, church like being moored to a dock that there's no freedom, there's no flow, there's no movement. We're swinging around all over the place out here we have a, an anchor line that's long and we're <laughs> and we're hanging around and we're swinging around and we're moving we have freedom within this world but we're still tied back to the place of safety um you know and, and it is amazing how uh while we a lot of people might think that 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 tie is cumbersome it's really freedom um because like you said it gives you people um, that are in your corner that are are there for you um you know i have uh you know i i can't tell you how often i'll get calls from people uh that that aren't a part of my church that they they that they, they the only reason they they call me is though well, i'm a pastor and so he'll help me hmm. i'm going through a hard time and the, you know some of them i know some of them i don't um you know, I'll have people that add me on Facebook. As a pastor, a lot of people will add you, and and so I'll have people add me on Facebook. You seem and, safe and enough. I'm safe enough. <laughs> I'm, yeah. uh, and they'll add me on Facebook, and they'll and I've never met them before in my life ever. And all of a sudden, I'll get a message that is just heartbreaking. You know, you know, my my wife is leaving me. Mm. Uh, you know, my kid committed suicide, or like just heartbreaking stuff. And of course, I'm there to help, and I'm there to love on them, and and to and to and to you know pray with them, to let them vent, let them you know, let them get mad and angry and yell. I don't care, you know, like I'm here for you, whatever. Let's 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 work through this. Um, but my heart breaks even more the fact that the only place they had to turn was somebody they'd never met. Mm. They didn't have somebody. Uh, in the midst of those hard times to really call um, to be there for them when they're going through it. And not just in the hard times, like they didn't have somebody there. Like, I don't know about you, you know, obviously I do because you just shared that story. I mean, like having the person that could look at you and go, stop being stupid. Yeah. You know, like, like, what are you doing? Like having those people there that in a completely loving way and not judging you, but can go, that's not smart. Like I, I look at my life, man. And the times that I've done dumb stuff, like, and I wish I had somebody, you know, and, and I didn't have somebody to say, Johnny, that's just not smart. Yeah. Like you're, you're making, you're, you're making a bad choice. Um, you know, I look at, you know, if you listen to last week's podcast, you know, I, uh, you know, talking about my history and that where I ended up with drugs and alcohol and, rock bands and all that jazz, you know, like just the stuff that was going on there, it was, it was pretty hard. And, and, and I didn't have anybody saying, I didn't have anybody that I trusted in the moment saying, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing? It's not smart. Let, let's get, let's, let's, let's tighten up here. Let's get this right. The, the accountability. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's really, I think the biggest thing for church is that if we are supposed to all be the body of Christ, the, the the church, the, the the bride, you know, like like you know, we are supposed to be the first love of God. 
together as a group, how are we supposed to, in the midst of, if if we believe in God and we believe that, and we believe in Jesus and we believe in God and we believe in the Bible, then we have to understand that we are the body of Christ, that we are, that the church is his first love, all of us. And, and how do we reconcile that with going, well, I'm not going to be a part of the thing that you love the most, God. Um, because broken people are there. Ignoring the fact that we're broken too. Like we're messed up. Um, but beyond that, like it would be like, you know, would you ever want to be friends with somebody that said, Joe, man, I, I love you. You're great. I can't stand your wife. I, I, she's, you know, you're great. You're cool. And I want, I want to be a part of your life, man. I want to hang out with you and go fishing, but I don't ever want to hear about your wife at all. Like, I don't want anything. I don't want to know anything. I don't want yeah, nothing, nothing to do with her. You, yeah, you wouldn't be friends with her, right? Yeah, with that tough. person. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be like, oh, great. See ya. Like, I, you know, I, my wife is my wife. I love her with all my heart. Like, yeah, sorry, dude. Like, you, you know, I'm not asking you to hang out with her all the time, but I'm not going to hang out with you if that's your viewpoint on my wife. Yeah. Because that's my first love. It just is. And, and in the same way, God's going, don't attack, you know, it, it, it's amazing how many people who call themselves Christians, but they attack the wounded of the church. Uh, they attack the broken and the people that are hurting. Even it, it, Almost completely just ignoring or forgetting the fact that we all we're broken or messed up or hurting at some point, probably recently. Yeah. Um, and so finding that group of people that are just there for you and, and, and not all churches are created equal. I mean, I think we both know that. Um, I think mean, anybody who's gone to churches know that, um, that, that all churches aren't created equal. Not all churches are like what I'm talking about. And, and it's, stinks because a lot of times it turns people off to really good churches um you know it's my you know it's my my call would be like you know it doesn't need to be the most comfortable church to walk into like i said before like uncomfortableness is a part of this thing you know it's you're doing something that's out of the norm for the world the world says that if it's not comfortable don't even think about doing it um you are taking a sort of a step out of faith to say, I'm going to go give it a shot. Um, so don't let that stop you from going back. But but if you go to a place that's obviously broken and it, it's not doing what I'm talking about, which what I'm talking about isn't about my church. It's about the way God said the church was supposed to be. And and so if the church... I mean, that what is that? Is Because I think that's confusion, right? I think a lot of people think that the church has to be the steeple it's what we you know no. we saw a lot in the 70s and 80s and the church is really just it's more about the people right like it's your completely bi- about the your people. biblical community doesn't have well, to be in a big church well with, my church yeah i started my church we meet at the ymca in lakeland <laughs> we meet in a, a gym you know we have to spray stuff around sometimes because it smells sweaty not really but you know it's <laughs> it, we meet in the gym um you know uh we're about to move into a permanent you know, semi-permanent location building right down the road, but right in front of the Lakeland Mall. Uh, and it's an old doctor's office. Mm. And we're renovating it to make it big enough and the space work for a church. Um, you know, I, I don't care where you meet. You know, it has nothing to do with the building. Um, and, and and honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with rituals either. Um, it doesn't have to do with well, we do this and then this and then this. It, it's not what it... It is completely the people. Now, do we have rituals? Do we have sort of services? And we, well, we do songs, and then we do the speaking. And we, you know, we do, yeah, churches do that. And that's, yep. you know, every church is, or most every church is going to have some sort of version of that. Um, you know, you have big group of people together, and you're trying to get, you know, you have things that you're trying to do. And, and so you have sort of an order. I mean, if you have a meeting for Salt Strong, you have an order of your meeting, like sure. what you're going to do. Um, but it's understanding that that's not the part when it comes to the church, the church that I'm talking about, you guys need to hear me. It is not, those things are not the church. Those things are not important. Those things are just merely a, a tool to get you to what's important, which is a group of people that are on the journey. 
to learn more about God and uh, let other people know more about him. I mean, that, 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 that is, that is the church and that's what it should be. And, 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 and I would encourage you to find that, mm. to find, because you will find, if you find that and, and trust me, they're not, they're not like few and far between. There are tons and tons and tons of great, great churches. Um, you know, it, you know, and they might have different music than you like, or they might believe something a little differently than you want to believe, and that's fine. You know, if you if you need to find one that fits you a little bit better, I totally understand that. Um, but but there are tons and tons of churches. You can email me. I'll I, I, and tell me where you live. I'll help you find one. Um, you know, Joel will do the same thing. We'll yeah. we'll help you. But but the, the the fact is is that that finding that community of people. That's what's important. Yep. The people that understand that we're broken, understand that God loves us in the midst of the fact that we're broken. Uh, he doesn't wait to love us till we're better. He wants to love us while we're messed up so that he can help make us better. Uh, and in the same way, you know, you find the church full of those kind of people, that kind of community, you're going to find uh, a place that is going to, love you in the midst of your pain and uh, your struggles, the things that you do wrong, the yep. things that you do right. Uh, they're going to be, you know, those people that are, that are just there for you. I, uh, um, uh, just a few months ago, um, my wife had, uh, we had our, I was, oh, was, it, was it longer than I thought, about 10 months ago, we had a baby. Uh, Time flies. Yeah. Little, his name is Texas and he's not little because everything's big in Texas. This kid's, he's, 10 months old and we're he, we just moved him up to 24 month pajamas he's huge uh his name is texas and about a month later sarah to have a, a little a little surgery uh and it wasn't a big surgery it was outpatient like a little like you know in like one of those surgery centers things where you go in and you leave three hours later like no big deal and we everything went fine we left and then that night she started not feeling good and um uh we were getting ready it was a saturday night uh we went home Friday after the surgery. Saturday, she woke up not feeling really good. Saturday afternoon, I went to help go set up our church, getting ready for Sunday morning. And uh, she called me and says, I need you to come home. And I, I came home, and she was had spiked about 104 or 105 degree fever and rushed her to the hospital. And she ended up, she had sepsis. She had blood poisoning. Mm. And it was just a really weird, abnormal thing. Uh, ended up in the ICU. And... I, I went from me setting up church to in an intensive care unit within like three hours. And I have three kids, including a little brand new baby. And I had to speak at church the next morning. Like, what do you do? But it, And that's that would terrify most people. But for me, it's not terrifying because I know. I have a community of people that love me. I made one phone call and I had like, two groups of families at our house playing with our kids, loving on them, putting them to bed. Uh, you know, uh, I made another phone call to a, another pastor and said, hey, I need you to speak for me tomorrow. Can you do that? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there for That's you. That's awesome. And uh, immediately, within within five minutes of this going down, all of the issues that come up from from struggles, from hard times, because that's the, hard, the, the issues that come up. Uh, those are the hard things. And, and within five minutes, they were completely alleviated. Like, I didn't have to worry about them. And it was because of the community I was a part of. It was because of the people I was around, the people in my church, you know. And I could focus on my wife and her getting better and, 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 and growing. And it, I was able to focus on what's most important to me, my family, in that moment. In her biggest moment of need, I was able to be there for her because I had a group of people that were just there for me. Like the best of friends, uh, and it's not. And and I get we all have you know. Hopefully, most of us have friends that are there for us. And you know, if our, our significant other goes in the hospital, they're going to be there to watch our kids. I get that, but I could also call those people and say, "Pray for me. I'm really scared. I'm worried right now. Can you pray with me right now? Can you just?" And that's not something that a lot of us have with our friends. Yep. You know, you have you know, husbands and wives that are buddies with you. You, you, you watch football games, you go fishing together, the families hang out at the beach, whatever. Um, they're there for you to help you with your kids, but you're not going to call them going, hey, I'm really struggling with, with fear right now. 
in doubt. Can you can you be there for me? That's what church does. It 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 is a community that doesn't it's not limited to one area. It's it's about your life and it's about your life becoming better. And and one tip on that too from someone who's not a pastor and has been to a lot of churches is it is intimidating to, to go into a new church and it's not like you just meet everyone at once, nor would you want to. <clears throat> no. But to find, and the small groups can be intimidating too, but what I've found is most, especially if it's a decent sized church, they'll have some kind of small group or something you might be interested in. For me, an easy one, for, for you men out there especially, is a softball team. A lot of these churches have softball teams or even kickball teams in some areas. Talk about a great place to go meet you know, 12 to 15 other we- uh, men maybe a couple women and all of a sudden you bomb off one or two of them and now all of a sudden you have your own little tight-knit church network of guys and I found that with my C12 group there's 12 of us Mm -hmm. and one guy Kevin who kind of leads us all and these have become like my friends that I can call or text and and they're not someone I necessarily hang out with every week some of them different places of even central Florida but I know we share the same thoughts fears values and and I and, and beliefs and faith and it, it's been game changing just to have that small network of either a softball team of you know twelve to fifteen people or a little small group like I have with for my sure. C twelve or even just any kind of small group. I, I've seen all our church that we're going to now. I mean, they have it for everything: women are that are into knitting, yep. and you know, uh, <laughs> single moms, right? I mean, just that are all yeah. going through the same kind of struggles, and and they all just they want to love on you, and, yeah. and, and most of them have the exact same fears. And the same anxiety that that we're all going through on a, on a oh, weekly basis. Oh, so. completely. And small groups are like such an incredible thing. You know, if you find a church that does really good with small groups, which is basically, if you don't know what a small group is, the, the vernacular from church, but uh, it is, it's basically like, you know, smaller groups of people from the church that meet together. You know, usually once a week, some in somebody's house or goes to a restaurant together or whatever. And and you might have a little Bible study or something like that. But really, it's less about the Bible study. It's more about connecting with other people that are in the same area of life and, and developing that community. You know, I know um, every church does small groups differently. I know for us, we, we, yeah, we've had so many different ones over the last five years. We've had groups for guys and girls that like to run, like running groups. We have a, a game night group, and it's for families. So you bring your kids, and, and they have board games set up everywhere, and everybody's playing board games with different families. So the kids will be over there playing Twister, and the parents are over here playing, you know, Trivial Pursuit or Monopoly or something like that, and just hanging out, yeah. just spending time together. You know, I've done a, I did a, a men's group for years. I'm about to bring it back. Uh, that was a, a Chick Fil A group, and we'd meet for breakfast at Chick Fil A once a week. Uh, I did a Monday night football group mm-hmm. for a while for men, and and so we would get together uh, and watch the game, and then during halftime we'd have a little short Bible study, and then we'd watch the rest of the game. Cool. And guys loved it because it was like a. You know, honey, I'm going to small group. It's it's really important, <laughs> uh, but they also got to watch the game. And so, it, but there, it is the one of the coolest ways to be able to find one or two people, and you'll yep. grow, and then you then you learn, and you meet new and more people. But you end up having that close knit group of people that you talk with and hang out with more often. Yep, yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Well, guys, we are going to end this one, and we'll do another one. We'll have to do a, yeah. a third. And uh, let us know. I, I, we'd love to hear feedback. This is new. If you haven't heard the first one, please go check out that one. That was a hard-hitting, uh, I mean, we didn't even open up a Bible, and I don't anticipate doing that at least any time in the near future. More just storytelling and talking about the, the same struggles that most of us have gone through with uh, with our faith and with our journey on faith. And so I would love to hear from you personally. Uh, my email is joe, J-O-E, at saltstrong.com with any questions, any topics, um, really, I mean, it's wide open here. We want to be, um, we kind of want to be facilitators, right? The yeah, for goal sure. Is is to answer the, some of the tough questions that that I know I'm struggling with, which or, or have at least in the in the past, and still a little bit iffy on some of them. So I'm doing this selfishly to to learn a little bit more myself. But to any questions that that you have, and then ultimately, you know, get you into a church, or even if it's not a traditional church, just to meet up with some people that all kind of in the, in the in the same journey that, that you're on and yep. uh, and that you guys can kind of pray over each other and grow together. Um, and so in, talk, talk about your church real quick for those that are yeah. in Polk County. Yeah, if you're in Polk County or, you know, anywhere near Lakeland, uh, our church is Discover Family Church. You can look it up, discoverfamilychurch.com, um, you know, or on Facebook or whatever. Um, and and here, here here's something you can do if you want. Um, uh, you can, if you 
like us on Facebook, Discover Family Church. Just look it up. It's in Lakeland. Uh, we live stream our services uh, on Sunday mornings. Um, now, I'm not telling you that that's the way you should always do it because you don't develop that community, that thing that we're talking about. But yeah. if you want to check it out. It's just getting behind the scenes kind yeah, of view. Yeah, you, hey. yeah. you get to watch a message. You get to watch You get to watch what a service looks like. We live stream it on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on Facebook there. Uh, but, yeah, we meet at 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. We're at the, at the beginning of the year, we're moving locations just about a quarter of a mile away right in front of the Lakeland Mall. But right now we meet at the YMCA on North Lakeland. Um, and uh, we meet at 10 a.m. right now. Uh, and, and, and so we'd love to, love to have you anytime. Or if, if you do want help uh, find another church or anything like that, you can email me too. My email's on the website, johnny at discoverfamilychurch.com. Cool. Well, guys, thank you so much. That's a wrap for this Salt Strong Unchurch episode number two. We'll be back with number three, and please do let us know. And obviously, we are not a normal church. We're not asking for tithes or anything like that. No. Uh, so all we ask is share this. If you have anyone who's maybe – maybe needs to go to church or maybe just needs a community of people that will just love on them and get them through a tough time. Share this mm-hmm. with them. Subscribe to the to the podcast. Subscribe to, to, to Johnny's Johnny's page there and uh, let us know how we can help you or, yeah. or pray for you in any way. For sure. Don't be mean about it. Don't be like, you need to go to church because you're bad. Uh, don't do that. But, you know, yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. I, yeah you have share. I th- hey, I, th- this, I just, I happen to hear this. I thought you might like it. I happen to hear this, you evil person. <laughs> uh, no, we, yeah, we'd love to have you share this and let people know about it, man. We love doing this. And yep. so thanks for being a part of it. Cool. We're going to go uh, boat around for a little bit. Yeah, we're going to go catch me a, a bass. Oh, a lunker. A big lunker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We out. Peace. Peace.